Well, today we're looking at the shadier side of gardening. Shade gardening is my favorite form of gardening, especially midsummer because it's much cooler. You can work outside midday and feel quite refreshed by all the cool shade plants generate. Remember when trees uh, lose moisture, shrubs lose moisture, you get that evaporation and then cool air descends. So not only blocking out the sunlight, you're getting an air conditioning effect. So midsummer shade gardening, got to be my favorite. Okay, what kind of shade have you got? Well, um, if you go to work at uh, eight o'clock in the morning and your garden's in shade, the bit where you want to put a shade garden, and then you come back at night, five o'clock, the garden's still in shade. But what happens midday? Maybe the sun comes streaming down and it, uh, you know, four hours of midday sun is high intense sun and it may not be suitable for all shade plants. So do an assessment of just how much shade you get. Now, is the shade caused by your house, by being on the north side or east side? So the sun is out of the picture, uh, very in the few hours of the morning, the sun goes round to the south and then your garden's in shade. Now a house won't suck a lot of moisture out of the soil, but these devils, trees do. So if your trees cause the shade, you might find they're much better at getting the moisture out of the soil and your little plants, the shrubs and the perennials might have a tough time. So there you are. just bear in mind what kind of shade you got, how much moisture you got in the soil, and then you can start selecting plants for it. Uh, bear in mind that the deer also like the shade. So uh, if you've provided them with a whole salad bowl of plants and it's shaded, they're gonna be decimated. So uh, select plants, uh, if you've got deer around, that are more deer resistant. Now in terms of plants, there's an enormous number of plants that grow well in the shade. In fact, the best thing to do is I'm gonna quickly walk through our shade house with you and show you the range of perennials, just the perennials you could be planting in your shade garden. So come on, let's have a look. Well, here I am at the shade house uh, here at Greystone Gardens and we're mimicking nature a bit. We're allowing a bit more sunlight in but remember, uh, a lot of shade gardens are caused by trees and they will, uh, as their leaves come out, the shade gets more and more deeper. So in about a week's time, we will put a shade cloth on here and come and mimic what nature's doing. In terms of plant range, you've got loads of stuff. We've got Brunera, Corydalis, old fashioned favorites like the Bleeding Heart. There's a classic and then there's the ever blooming kind. Now, Hosta. These can be tiny little ones like this, not the smallest one we sell, Blue mouse ears stays this size, or something like Empress Wu, which is the biggest one. It will come up at least three, four feet, could be five feet across. It's a monster. What do we got here? Lots of little uh, hosta again. Lots of ground covers can be used in the uh, shade area. Lamiastrum, or this gorgeous little plant, Solomon seal. Each year it will spread out and block. Behind it, we have a ligularia. They flower midsummer, so flowers midsummer in the shade garden are quite possible. Ferns. Whether it's a regular green fern or one of these Japanese painted ferns, there really are some great choices to be had. Or, <laughs> just got to watch what you buy. So this looks kind of innocent and interesting, but it is a rampant spreader. We have a patch down uh, in the garden center and you can see how aggressive it has been. It looks fabulous though, if you've got the room and the place for it. So one of the best ways of getting a feel of how you use all these kinds of plants is to see a garden that's matured. And I've got one to show you, it's at my house faces north. Well, here we are in my front garden. It's a little area where you'll wonder why I'm spending so much time on it. And if you see from the view from that direction, it's kind of hidden from the main driveway up to the front door. But the real secret is this window. It's in right next to my kitchen table and we can look out of it in the winter and in the summer we can open the window we can put a little water uh, feature here to make a little bit of sound and it distracts from the road. So in terms of plant material, what do we got? Low down, we've got lots of uh, creeping little ground covers, some larger perennials, uh, rocks covered in moss. Once you get shade, the moss will do quite well. And up above us, giving us a little bit more shade are the trees. This is a American dogwood and we've got a Japanese maple orange dream with the yellow foliage. We've got some amazing shrubs in here as well. This is an azalea that hasn't bloomed yet. It has those big, bright, orange-red flowers, kind of a brick-red color. Behind it, still in flower, is the double-flowering quince. So when we look out there, there's something to cheer us up. Uh, this is a wood hydrangea that literally fills the whole space up. Various hosta down below here. The little Corydalis lutea, I'll talk about that in a minute. It looks like there's a gap here. It looks like bare soil. 
But just poking out of the ground are the Aurelias, Sun King. These will go three to four feet and give us a splash of yellow all summer long. Now, spring flowers are wonderful. The problem being is that they don't last all summer long. There are very few shade plants, except that Corydalis, that little yellow plant that flower all summer long. So we look to leaf color. If you've got a bright yellow leaf next to a purple leaf, it's a strong contrast and that's gonna last all summer long. As an evergreen backdrop, we've got a small hemlock, a Bennett weeping hemlock. Once in a while, I have to cut a branch off it, but it gives us that evergreen look all winter long. And a, a holly hair, we've tucked the holly hair. We do have deer in our yard, but if we've poked it close to a house hair, um, it seemed to have left it alone. I've trained this one as a tree and there's a smaller one down below. In the foreground here, these lovely forget-me-lock-like flowers are the Siberian bug gloss. They have a lovely leaf, a variegated leaf that gets better and better during the summer. Uh, we've got an astilbe here that hasn't flowered yet. It's got dark leaves. We've got, this is that Corydalis lutea, this lovely little yellow plant. We've shown it many, many times. It seeds itself everywhere and it's probably the longest flowering we have in the shade garden. Very delicate, you don't think it's that strong. We have a lily of a valley just coming into flower and all kinds of helibores, hellebores. Um, double flowering, single flowering, white, yellow, purple, red, pink. There's a whole range that, as you can see, do really, really well. So putting them together, it creates a little filtered light and you get the sparkles of color basically all summer long. And there's enough interest with the trees and the shapes of the plants that even in winter with snow around it, and the rocks exposed, it's a very attractive winter scene as well. So there we go, a little introduction to shade gardening. Um, one of the secrets though, is to keep buying plants through the summer. Don't fill everything up at once because you may get things wrong. Choose plants through the summer and you may get some late flowering, but you can also choose plants that got really good, interesting foliage. So if you've got any questions, I'm always down at Greystone Gardens. Come and see me and I hopefully I can answer your questions.